Pure water, pure pride, pure Jamaican. Pure water is about pure hydration. Remember to drink pure water and satisfy all your pure water needs. Greetings everyone. This is George Osang listening to Open Gate Show. Number one. Take a listen. Hello racing fan. This is Emila Bimbo Rodriguez. Listen to the Open Gate Show with Colin Blair. Giving you the latest tips and reviews on the horses. Big up the number one show. Hi, I'm Richard Woolworth, living in Pembroke Pine, South Florida, and I listen to the Open Gate Show anytime it's possible. It's very informative, and it, I recommend it to all the people who out there who have any interest whatsoever in horse racing, love thoroughbreds, take a listen. You won't regret it. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Open Gate Show. Friday, August 6th for Saturday's classic race meet, which involves the Jamaica Oaks and the prestigious Jamaica Derby. Remember, wear your mask, practice social distancing, sanitize your hands, and rehydrate yourself with Jamaica's pure pride bottled water, a pure water we drink. I dare you to experience the taste. Smooth, refreshing, and truly worth it. If you don't fit, ask for it. Demand it. I should thank all well, well wishers, hundreds of them, who wished me a happy birthday yesterday. And, you know, I was really thrilled. There are lots of earrings that are looking good. And I would encourage people to go to the farms and expect them and buy one or two. Good horses makes good trainers, good owners. We need more good trainers at Caymanus Park. It's easy to find one. There are a few of them who aren't getting much horses. The claiming system ain't much for the future of horse racing and a good trainer will look stupid trying to win a, with a claiming horse, especially those that have no real uh, back class. Anyway, so much for that. Some are saying it's the poor classic uh, race meet tomorrow where the Oaks and Derby looking very poor on paper. Supreme Ventures Racing Entertainment Limited can't be blamed, except I would say for the racing surface that fails to have enough moisture, to have the required bounce in action, to limit concussion of the horse's legs and other connecting structures. Hey, I'm hoping Supreme Ventures Racing Entertainment Limited and Team Salah Sharp will be sharper next year and will overcome some of the issues they are facing presently. 11 races tomorrow, post time 11.25 a.m. And it starts with the 1985 Derby winner, Diesel Legend. Of course, Diesel Legend was trained by Kenny Maddis. Andrew M. Jeet and Hubert Bartley were the regular, well, were the regular riders? Yes, I think so. 10 starters for four years and up, none, who have never won two races as well as imported four years and up, who are maidens. This is section one. They go five and a half furlongs or 1,100 meters. Number one, Smokey, my Smokey. Uh, poised for a display alike on the, um, the 8th of April, going this very trip of five and a half furlongs, when he led and fought off um, Miss Francis and Toughness to win. Should improve on that as she's had five subsequent starts and she has looked focused this week on the exercise track. Number four, Ultimatum could get into an exotic placing. Number five, Princess Kara, Speedy Sword, who is coming off a six and a half month hiatus. Race against and lead far better than these, but falters always. That break should be beneficial as I'm almost certain it is used to get her better. And with this light impulse, it has to be caught. 
Number eight, Angelos. This one has, has been looking much sharper on the exercise course of late and could be one fighting this out. Number five, Princess Kara. Number eight, Angelos. Number one, my Smokey. Number four, Ultimatum. That's my selection for the first race. Race two features the 2006 Ransom Man. That horse, Ransom Man, won the, the Derby that year. Uh, trained by Egerton Fullerton and ridden by Brian Harden. They'll be going five and a half furlongs again, and, and as well as six, it doesn't want to meet the same thing. Children up, it's a claim attack race, 450,000. Number one, Stanislaus, consistent thought, who is frequently uh, claimed, should be in with a top three uh, expectations. Number two, Superbia, gets Omar Walker. Number three, Capone. Let's welcome back trainer Bernard Vincent, another trainer who has done well with horses that have use that he formerly trained. The Open Gate Show, welcome back to the veteran. Number four, hardworking man, first time in for a tag. And uh, this horse got a change of stable. And let's see what that will do from the informed camp of Gregor Forsyth. Number five, Smokey Topaz, his issues of a lot, but has heart. Should be in the mix, especially how trainer Andrew McDonald ain't dormant since that win with uh, that horse there on Tuesday. I don't remember that horse name, pardon me. Number six, Mr. Ambassador, looks likely to be the one to beat. Number seven, just an illusion. Trainer doing very well as Joseph Durant with new recruits. Anyway, number six, Mr. Ambassador, number one, Stanislaus, number five, Smokey Two Pass, number two, Super Amia. We go to race three, and this race uh, goes six furlongs or 1,200 meters, and it's named in honor of the 2015 Derby winner Seeking My Dreams. Wayne Lacosta, Omar Walker, Al Safra, Norman, and, well, he was part owner, that gentleman, Norman Smith. Uh, Linville McFarlane was the groom, seeking my dreams is that stud, and I can say, his offsprings, they look neat, well conformed, and very agile. So interesting to see what all those horses will perform uh, when they run next year. All right, another race that goes the distance of six furlongs or 1,200 meters, six starters though. This is for trees and up, overnight allowance. Number two, Big Big Daddy could get a place on the board. Number three, Jumma Boy working well to return to run on the curve with female apprentice Abigail Abel. Number four, Laban uh, came four and second behind the out of class mahogany at this distance on the 12th of June. The vibe is off and first time figure it is on. Let's see what Richard Hassan can get from that. Number five, Money Monster, looking in the pink of condition and has a feather to tote. Number four, Laban, and number six, Solid Approach, had him behind twice lately, but he'll be a different monster tomorrow. Let's see if he can scare them away to be alone in the winner's enclosure. <laughs> we go to number six, Solid Approach, small but talented sprinter whose last run two weeks ago was very good. When going um, five and a half furlongs, coming off a four and a half month hiatus against um, a good off, Trevor's choice, very fit, race fit, solid approach, finish half a little second to that one, and surely ran well. I'm selecting number six, solid approach to win from number five, Money Monster, number four, Laban, number two, Big, Big Daddy. Race four. That race is a very interesting race. But I go for a break and when we come back, we get on to race four. The Open Gate Show just had to rehydrate myself with some pure water, Jamaica's pure pride bottled water. Remember, experience the taste. I can tell you, 
you won't regret it. Race 4 has 10 starters, they go 5.5 further or 1100 meters for Lady Bird Foils and Up, who's number one, two races as well as imported. Foils and Up, who are made in its section 2 of this class. This race is named in honor of 1983 winner Hello Puchilu, trained by Philip Fian and Neville Anderson rode his horse uh, a number of times for the Bra Syndicate in May Penn. Those days, that syndicate won a lot of races for the maestro as their trainer. All right, number one, Miss AJC, changed stable since last race. That was on the 5th of July. Number two, State of Emergency. Unpredictable thought who, if focus, can gain a top five slot, but not in the top three. Number three, Stamper Man, consistency he has, but that elusive win in this class could remain unless the top one fail here. Number four, why we said so has speed, but obviously has issues too. Number six, both Jim Flashy, weak in, in his races. Number seven, another prosecutor reverts to a more super chip and is a dangerous contender. The last time this horse ran, it was going, what is it, six and a half furlongs, and you're challenging up to the furlong point. That was on the 10th of July, uh, and ended up second, seven length behind Gamblo, who was really looking like an out of class horse then. Gamble went up in class and did okay at a shorter trip. Number six, number eight rather, Dayton, Daytona Bell ran okay on last at seven furlongs. That was on the 24th of July, got beat by five and third after uh, up there charging for the top three slot and faded a bit above all links. One from Royal War of the Roses, coming back now against the few better though. Number 10, Stevie the Great, won impressively on debut, albeit against not much. It's the 24th of July, going five from straight, pulled away to win easily by five lengths, beating take two and sheer beauty. Uh, can improve to make this two in a row and remain unbeaten. Came back and worked okay enough to suggest that uh, he, he should improve to have the better of these. Number 10, Stevie the Great. Number 7, another prosecutor. Dangerous horse, though. Number 3, Stamper Man. Number 8, Daytona Bell. Number 2, State of Emergency. We go to race 5. Race 5. And it, they go a mile or 1,600 meters. Uh, this is really part of the feature race. The Independence Day Stakes. And of course, uh, Jamaica became independent in 1958, and um, not much difference. Some are saying we should we should have gained our independence, but you know we all have different opinions. Anyway, let's enjoy the Independence Day and hope that you know everybody will be a winner, although that's impossible. Uh, Eleven starters here and four children up as an optional claim rate two hundred fifty thousand. With Native Bird six years and up, who've never won four races as well as Native Bird five years and up, who are maidens. Did I say 11 starters? I think I did. Number one, Kingswood uh, had come, uh, had some form last, su last summer uh, and ran two, two races of a 10 month sojourn, but uh, busy on the exercise track. Uh, busy on the norm. Will be in good condition. I haven't seen this one, but I'm giving this one a good chance tomorrow in this if you see until the Thomas rides. Number two, Royal Aviator. Plummets down to 23 for tag where he had his last two victories. Number three, Isotope. I've been around this class since February after being claimed. Strange. He is very busy in the morning and it's interesting the nelson gets the call number five unbreakable loves his approximate distance but in the level he was earlier this year at present number seven congrats suki came back to the winner's enclosure given michael marlowe's team a congratulations 
and congratulatory odds at 25 to 1. Number 8, here comes the boss. Has number 7, Conrad Strictly, and his table mate, number 10, Ride at the Mob, to overcome. Number 10, Ride at the Mob, racing frequently, but could get a low exotic spot on the board. Number 11, whatever, has raced four times at zero distances. Um, within six weeks since claimed by trader Paul Charlton, get first time tongue tie and chain Ellis. Mm. Ellis, with first time equipment change, have been magical almost always. Remember, the Open Gate show is telling you that. So beware. Number one, though, Kingswood for number seven, Conrad Suki. Number three, Ice Talk. Number two, Raw Elevator. Number 10, Riley the Mouth. Number 11, whatever. We go to race six. Race number six, and that race is, well, it's, it's interesting because we have 16 starters, and it's for native bread. Two maidens will never finish second or third in their lifetime. This race is named in honor of Techno Motor, and the 20, 2011 Derby winner, Anthony Nunes was the trainer. The Cardenas did very well. With that horse, I think that horse went to Trinidad and ran well too. Yes, he did. Number two, Trojan, the Trojan Warrior gets first time visor after being stepped up the size. Number three, tradition, traditional boy gets a positive change of rider after two runs coming off the bench, two months respite, and looking a bit improved as like a size. Number four, Nakamura. Could improve in figures somewhere in the lower order. Number six, Paraiso. Working well to make an improved display, I, I'm thinking. And this one is returning off a five and a half, well, a five month hiatus for the leading trainer and defending champion, Anthony Nunes. Anthony Nunes has to start getting back his barn. Focus as Gary Sobrati could. Be the new leader after this race meet. One never knows. Number nine, number eight, little groovy thing. Haven't shown anything as yet. Number ten, let's get it on. A likely outsider for a minor placing. Number thirteen, brother blush. Should have a good chance. I'm thinking it should be more focused than that last run on the 7th of July, where he was with the leaders and faded to be fifth, eight length behind our teacher. Rocket Lily Balotelli. Number 13, Battle Blush from number 3, traditional board of six Parazzo. Number 10, let's get it on. Number 4, Mecklemaro. Race 7. That race is the race that has the 2021 Jamaica Oaks. 12 starters, 10 furlongs, or 2,000 meters. It's from the native bed. Trio, the future race. Fill it alone. It's a grade, grade one race. Number one, awesome choice. Born the 2nd of March, just a fill by sensational slam out of lipstick lily by a master command. Builder Marcus the Dub, Order Guard Samuel, Stephen, Stephen Todd, Trains, Stephen Foster Rides, The Groom, Isaac Peterson. This horse raced 14 times and won only two races. Number two, she's a wonder. Born the 4th of April, be Philip by Bernard Delity of the Jamaican Dream by Southern Halo. Breeder, trainer Richard Azan, trainer Ian Pathard. Well, he's training this one also. And Paradise Racing. Owner, Karen Pathard, wife of Ian Pathard and Henry Pratt. Ryan Lewis gets the call. Kenneth Keeper, the groom. This horse raced 11 times and won five races. Gets back the favorite blinkers and will be more focused this time than last when in the same leisure, finishing seven and a half and third behind calculus and further on beyond. Not sure his horse was fully focused for that race. I'm sure she will for this. In Pesad Bond is doing very well, and the Open Gate Show appreciates when big spenders in racing does well. Uh, this horse, if George Osan, Emilio Rodriguez, Winston Griffith, Charles Huffy, Shane Ellis, and Jerome Jeep, Trevor Simpson, either of them was on board, 
I think this horse would win by maybe 10 lengths. Sir Lewis is a good jockey, even though hard to ride in these days. Surely he won't make any mistake here. Number three, Sweet Majesty. This horse uh, was born the 5th of February, uh, by, by Philly by Soul Warrior to be the end by Lemon Drop Kid. Breeder, Evergreen Farm Limited, owner royalty, racing stables, Edward Stanbury. He will sell this one. Then Nelson, he will ride. Sweet Majesty will be closing, and the out outcome surely will be part of that. Uh, you know, um, it's, this horse is one of my favorite horses, this Sweet Majesty. Anyway, she will get the distance as she's bred top and bottom to do so as Soul Warrior and more so Lemon Drop Kid. Those jeans are stained jeans. Number four, Artisha, born the 30th of March, a great filly by Sensation and Slam out of Runaway Judy by Les Banker, Breeder Hampstead Limited, owner Naya, the groom. Andrew Hookie, Anthony Thomas rides for top trainer Richard Azan. This horse ran seven times and won one race. Incidentally, Sweet Majesty ran 11 times and won only one also. I go now to number five, Kai Alexis, groomed by Everton Russell. This horse was born the 10th of April, a bit by Northern Giant, out of Geisha's Art, by Pat and Jack, breeder. Glen Lee Robinson, owner Kevin Witter, apprentice Dallas Satchel, rides for trainer Ryan Darby. Half, well, Kyle Alexis is half to the 2020 Derby winner, King Arthur. She broke her maiden around two turns. Number six, Catalina. This horse uh, was born the 4th of April, just a filly by a ride on curling by Alienate by Graham All. Breeder Glenn Mills. Owner MNF Syndicate, Keith Johnstone, the groom, Javon and Patterson Rides for Gary Crawford. This also was born here in utero and is bred to get the trip and should be part of the top five, as I kind of like how she's looking since uh, just before the last race on the 17th of July. Number seven, and, and the links. March 10th, born, tested fully by Emperor All out of No Assembly Required by Yankee Gentleman. Breeder Buffett All, Order Ian Lodge, Bertie Johnson, the groom, for the apartment ride. Rides this one for Jason the Costa, working well, but ventures around two turns for the first time, and last four races were poor. Number eight, Heavenly Glitter, born the 20, 22nd of March, Dark Bay Philly by Deputy Glitters, out of Heavenly Peace by East Over Court. Breeder Michael Bernard, owner of your family, Adam Beckford, rides, uh, the groom, sorry, Dean Dawkins rides for title chasing trainer, Gary Sabrati. Number nine, Amy the Butcher, born the 11th of April, a great filly by Deputy Glitters, out of Asia's Dream by Easy Real Thing. Breeder and owner Oliver Gray, the groom Nicholas Palmer, the Cardinals ride for Patrick Fong. Amy the Butcher ran 14 times and won two races. As a matter of fact, let me go back all the way to number six, Catalino, who ran 10 times and won one races. Number seven, Irons and Lynx ran 11 times and also won one. So too, number eight, Evan Glitter runs four ran four times and only won one race. Uh, Amy the Butcher, a nice refreshing and can get into the top four. And maybe even closer, it all depends on how um the top two or three horses enjoys this 10 furlongs and who makes the move too early you know that could announce him as a bush replacement number 10 secret identity born the 27th of february by philip by brand identity out of pomeroy secret by pomeroy breeder and owner Ewan elliot mr elliot all the best of luck sir and those people in junction st elizabeth i know they'll be cheering on this filly in winning this classic event. The groom, Nigel Cowdy, Yuval Pinnock, the apprentice to the ride for Tennyson Chung, uh, looking to be the only one to take the honors if she's the one that fails of note. 
uh, a, a, a run going beyond six furlongs. Um, don't don't say much. Although she's bred to get the distance of ground. Um, secret identity. She is moving much more fluid at the on the five track, in my opinion, and will definitely run a very good race. All the best to Tennyson Chang. Number 11, La Baika, born the 28th of March, a bay filly by Northern Jan, out of Marine Drive by Air Orphan, a brilliant owner, Derek Gale, as well as a matter of fact, uh, the late trainer, Prince McDonald and his part breeder, the groom, Conrad Daly, Shane Ellis, the classic jockey, or the big race jockey, gets the call. He has ridden this one twice already, and this will be the third time. Stephen Todd trains. Tiny Philly, who has been taken to task on the precise track since breaking her maiden on the 12th of July. Uh, very interesting, but has to be a freak to have any chance of places in this race. I hope I didn't, I'm not too harsh on her. Number 12 action on. Oh, let me get back to La Baker. Uh, race twice and won one race and finished second. The other. Number 12, Action On, born the 13th of March, a great filly by Sensational Slammer of Lady Light by Distorted, owner of Breeder, Hampstead of Limited, owner Darryl Vaz at Howard Hamilton, the groom Andre Adams, Omar Walker gets the call for Chris Payson. Doesn't look the part in condition, in my opinion, to merit a top three. Well, to, to, to obtain a top four placing. In my opinion, that's it. Anyway, number two, she's a wonder. And these four, for the minor placings, in order, number 10, Secret Identity, number three, Sweet Majesty, number six, Catalina, number nine, Amy the Butcher. Remember, I told you number 10, Secret Identity, will win if the favorite fails for whatever reason. Okay, race eight. And they will be going 1,400 meters or seven furlongs. And this race is named in honor to 1995 Derby winner, Dorval, the dark bay colt, well, gelding, big bodied, strong, muscled, trainer Richard Hassan. Uh, he owned and trained at one, Andrew M. G. Neville Anderson, George Hassan, rode that horse uh, for some of his victory. Good horse, that one. This race is for Native Bird and up. Well, never won three races as well as imported for and up who's never won two races 13 starters and number one roses for early can upset if meandering from this inner post number two china express look okay working out yesterday number three versatile vision likely to get low exotic placing number four high diplomacy needs to break better could be now well maybe number five ajita Third to one and closed fast the last time this horse ran. And that was the 24th of July, going six furlongs, finishing one and a half length behind Elitis. Uh, up in grade the last two times, and that last race shows that Ajita can handle this company. Uh, the odds in that race, 30 to one, suggest she wasn't all that. Focus then could be focused now, so beware. Uh, number seven, my time now. Already betted a few of the top ones here. Anton Thomas knows this horse very well, and he has been returned after those three subsequent runs with a jockey Dick Cardenas. Number eight, Craft and Ready, stretching out after a week in four days ago, going five furlongs round and will be able to re relax more. Uh, kept on to be half and third, then Pamela Fair and Lava Boy. As I mentioned, that was four days ago. Uh, number 10, Attorney General, consistent filly. Number 11, above all links, one over this distance in the lower class. Paper light for this. I don't like this one to win, but could get a place on the board. Number 12, Gambler. Ran well, coming up in grade. Uh, 
over this trip. Over a trip which was too short. That was only 24 drag on six furlongs. Close from way behind to get within four and four to Elitis Ajita. And she took Prince after breaking slowly. Uh, gets a further more tomorrow. And that should add to his chances of at least getting into the top three. And the turning tape boy was troubled throughout the race on, where was it? The 24th of July in the same race that Ajita and Gambler ran in was way behind and ended up six length, six, sorry, six, five lengths behind those. Mm. Going longer now and should be better off seeing that he's drawn on the outside, which is a better post and apprentice Roger Hewitt of all the time to, to look and judge the, the pace and make his move. One of these, number seven, my time now, number one, Rosie Foyelli, number 10, Attorney General, number 12, Gambler, number five, Ajita, very interesting horse here, also number 13, Cape Boy. All right, we go to race nine, race nine, and that race is, will be analyzed after I get back. Welcome back to the Open Gate Show, race nine is for Chill Maiden, it's a Chill Maiden condition race. 11 starters, they go six and a half furlongs or 1300 meters. This race is named after the 2012 Derby winner typewriter, trained by Spencer Chung, owned by his family, Stephen Val Chung. Shade Ellis, the rider, the blacksmith, Craig Thompson, did a very good job on this horse and must be mentioned. Sam Carter was the groom, typewriter, I think was one of the top horses in the last 10 years. Well, top tier in the last 10 years. All right, 11 starters, number one, Balotelli, Shane Ellis rides for the first time and he does well when he teams up with trainer Alfred Brown. Number two, Land Talk, uh, showed improvement out of the straight, this is six and a half furlongs. Let's see if there's any further improvement in that one. Number four, Leo. Could figure again if focused too. Number five, Big Man Biden. Averts to a middle distance uh, journey with a few sharp workouts. Interesting horse who um, hasn't shown much improvement. But let's see what happens. Coming off a brief respite. We go to number seven, Ring Charmer. A possibility if a July 31st issue on a size track can be corrected. Uh, she was reported to have bled. Check out bed. KD's vehicle headband for restoration. Hard Our headbands are fine sanded, buffed, and 9H coated failed. with a two year guarantee. July. Price starting at $4,500. Internal restoration and modification starts at $8,000. To make an appointment today, call us at 876 824 6186. Add Leo five and a half lengths back in third. Uh, cutting back in distance and is definitely fit. Let's see what Buff Bay will do. Number 11, Minot Cat, ran well over a mile. Uh, finishing two and, a half, two and three goals on second after leading with hopes of going to make it into pole to pole affair. So I'm tying her off, figured it's back on, and this horse has a good chance of getting it done this time. Number 11, Minot Bird, Minot Cat rather. <laughs> number four, Leo, number one, Balotelli, and seven, Ring Charmer, number nine, Buff Bay in that order yes we come to the big one the most coveted race at Caymanus Park as a matter of fact all over the world prestigious race but this is Jamaica so it's the Jamaica Derby it's for native bed trios the futurity race the grade one race 10 starters 12 furlongs or 2400 meters a good purse of seven and a half million dollars. Stamina 
is key in the Western Hemisphere. Stamina is waning. I wonder why. Unlike in Europe and Asia, when a horse is bred with stamina progeny, they run to that accordingly. Unlike in the Western Hemisphere, including our Jamaica. Well, at least you can say number one, calculus has the stamina. This horse was born on 9th of March, a big quote by Sensational Slam out of Trinket Box by Bernardini. Breeder Akama Maharaj, owner Shevan Maharaj, the groom Lyde Bennett, Gary Sabrati, trains Shane Ellis, rides again. His last race in the St. Leisure says it all. 12th of July, going 10 furlong, pulled away to win by six and three quarter lengths, beating furlong beyond. She's a wonder and company. Looked very sharp, as a matter of fact, looking much better than when he was than when he was prepared for the St. Ledger. Gary Sabrati winning his first trainer's title. Starts here. I wish Team Sabrati well. What a moment for Sabrati if he wins this race. He'll be the new leader in the trainer's championship. Number two positive ID born on the 26th of March. A big quote by Bernard Ennett of Bubble Gal Bubble by Air Orphan, Breeder Ian Passard, Owner Valerie Marlow, Michael Marlow trains Aaron Chacha Rides, one of six horses here who has already won around two turns. Uh, calculus started eight times and won three races. Positive ID started six times and won one. We go to number three. Regal and Royal, born the 12th of April, a big quote by Soul Warrior out of WAP by Victor Gallup. Breeder of Games Farm Limited owner, Trinidadian Horseman, breeder and trainer Harold Chidi. The groom, one of Stevens, Gary Griffiths, the, the trainer, Tevin Foster, he rides. One in a slow time over 10 furlongs on the 17th of July. That time was 2.13, but time sometimes mean nothing as the dry racing surface most times on a racetrack will have the time fluctuating so remember that anyway he should have a chance of getting a top spot remember he is an offspring of wap who did whose, whose progeny did very well going a distance of ground especially in the trilogy classic series uh, over a four-year period uh, Roland Regal ran five times, sorry, 15 times and won two races. Before Santorini, born the 30th of June, of, of April, rather, Chetan Gellin by Soul Warriors of Milestone by Vanadium, breeder, Evergreen Farms Limited, owner by Christian Sagan Mirage, trainer, Anthony Nunes, the reigning champion trainer, Linton Stebbin rides, Howard Anglin, the groom. Kind of like how this one is looking of late. Ran 10 times and only won one race. But uh, Santorini, I am in the fashion that he will get on the board. Or maybe a good odds too. Number five, and I links more the 26th of, uh, what is it, March? Similar to Positive ID. This is a big gelding by Emperor All Out of Brew to Perfection by Milwaukee Brew. Of an all the breeder, he enlarged the owner, Marvin Fraser. He is the groom for this one, Philip Farchment, rides for Jason Acosta, ran five times and win one race. Number six, Money Man, born the 8th of February, Gray Gelding by Bernard Editor of Silver Shadows by Storm Craft, breeder Karen Prasad, owner and trainer David Lee Singh, Patrick Shaw, St. Patrick Shaw, the groom, Ren Lewis rides. This horse ran 12 times and won one race and didn't place in the order 11, except for a fourth place finish. Number seven, Billy Wiz, born the 24th of March, a Chester Gellin by Northern John, out of Cadilla, by Is the Real Thing, Wise 95 Limits is the breeder, Von G. White, the owner, Terrence Bloomfield, the groom, the Cardinals rides for Jason Jacosta, who has quite a number of trios uh, in both classics. Uh, don't give this one much of a chance, but it could be up 
with the lead for the first six furlongs or so. Number eight, Daddy Jones, born the 23rd of February, a great court by American Dance, out of Meteorite by Traditional. Travis Metcalf, CDOD, the breeder, Nile, the owner, Rivetta Nelson, the groom, Anthony Thomas rides for trainer Richard Lazan. Daddy Jones ran eight times and won twice. We come to number nine, the very interesting further and beyond. He's also born the 14th of March. Uh, oh my eyes. A chestnut coat by Blue Pets, Lord of Rumble by Graham All. Breeder Chad Fiani, son of Philip Fiani. Also included are Herman Leong and Donna Wong. Owner R. Pathad, Viodit, R. Punai, and Elias Lute. Then Nelson again rides for the champion trainer. Anthony Nunes, the groom to Fari Wright. Weakened when venturing around two turns for the first time. I'm concerned with three things. One, the Nunes camp is very cold. Two, this horse last two starts were disappointing. Three, this horse had a 12 day gap between workouts. The 19th of July, got up seven from the 134.25, came back the 31st of July, uh, going eight from the 149, seven from the 134 and the fifth. Normally, the Derby always has some. Would I say rumors or derby rumors or derby antics, whatever it is. But some are saying further and beyond it's right. They said it about typewriter and so many other horses here in Jamaica. And everybody, well, those who were by were, were taking that were disappointed. Uh, all I can say, if he return to winning ways, then the championship is over. Visor is off for the first time. I don't know. I, I don't think that this horse will win. But let's see. I hope well for Team Eunice. Very, very pivotal race for the 2021 trainer's title. Number 10, Big Julie, born the 8th of May, a big coat by Tapizar, out of blue, blues in the grass by Blue, blue Grass Cat. Breeder, Ian Pathard, owner, T. Ellis, current Pathard, T. Pragnell, and H. Pratt, as well as A. Kuz the Target. The groom, Dumston Bramwell, Omar Walker, he gets the call. Superb bred coat, who has who was born here in Utah, specially to sweep the 2021 classics. He developed an issue rendering much track workout, but visits the beach a plenty. Had two workouts recently uh, in close proximity. That's another. Con that's a concern for me. Uh, one, he better stablemate double crown who came and, and, and won six days after the exercise with the stablemate. Clock 157 and 450 for 820 meters, chanting away in the stretch on the 21st of June for a 19 length victory. That was the last time this one raced. He was crashed out of the last race on the 17th of July. Uh, I wish connections well, as we need more caliber horses. The only horse here that can help the reigning champion, Anthony Lewis, retain his title this season by bettering calculus tomorrow. What tension in the making for Team Nunes? Number one, Calculus. From number 10, Big Jewel. Number three, Roland Regal. Number four, Santorini. Number nine, Further and Beyond. Please don't bash me if Further and Beyond wins. I just don't like him tomorrow. We go to the final race, race 11, and its name in honor of the 1983 Derby winner, Elo Pucci Lu, Philip Fiani again, Neville Anderson rides this one. Oh, is it? Did I go through this race already? 
I did. Am I going through the twice? Okay, let me go for a break. And then I come back, I'll decipher the final race. Okay, welcome back. It's my birthday. So listen, I'm liable of making a mistake or two, don't it? <laughs> All right, the final race, race 11. 12 starts, they go six and a half furlongs or, or 2,300 meters. It's for native red trios who've never won two races as well as native red trios and up who are still a maiden. This race is named in honor of the 1990 Derby winner, distinctly native, trained by Philip Fiala, Winston Griffiths, the rider. I think Gucci was the groom. That's all I know, the alias name of, this, of, of, of that groom. But I hope I'm correct. I'm sure Dennis Harrison will correct me if I'm wrong. And Dennis, at this time on the Open Gate Show, I applaud you for your knowledge. All right, number one, King's Magician could close for a spot on the board. Number three, pretty cash. Looking more focused in the mornings and should show how valuable she is at this point, getting the tongue tie for the first time, as well as the strong jockey, Robert Halladine. Number four, all can call, bear some watching for the exotic players. Number five, Rising Saints, one of my favorite horse, getting, uh, getting the same trip he broke his maiden at um beating oh sorry about that beating horses that came next time out and won that was an rapture from gary sobrati and kyle Alexis from ryan darby stable that's a, a plus number five a torment did broke a maiden at this distance number eight bottom rouge one of jason's the costa Three pronged entry here. Well, two of them have a very good chance. But in Rouge, working well uh, and um, ventures around the turn at a more suitable distance, six and a half furlongs. Ran his first two races were out the straight. He won on debut and ran a very good race after rain at the gate to be one and three quarter and third to still meet Gentle Giant and King Magician who is in this race. Next outing, 17th of July, three weeks ago, went way out to 10 furlongs and as, as the open gate show expected, ran very dismal, dismally. Just uh, because you should know why he ran, that, he ran there. I was surprised that he got 8 to 5. That was totally ridiculous. Anyway, he's back at a distance with his favorite rider. Anthony Thomas. Number eight, number nine, Taurus Boy keeps weakening. I'm not sure that will change. Number 11, JJ, JJ the Striker, not to be taken lightly, especially for those who play the exotics. Number 12, I am Fred, ran well on the second start on debut. He took no part, he whipped around. Mm. Is that a habit? Possibly. Anyway, Last time this horse ran two weeks ago, 24th of July, going five furlongs round, broke through and came flying. I think he, he could have been much closer if he hadn't meandered twice to get a clear run, uh, uh, leaving the furlong point. Uh, get out of real estate to, add, to, to, to assist him now. And um, not doing much on a size track, but based on that last effort, he has to be respected. So I'm selecting number 12, I'm Fred, to win. But number five, rather than Saints, and number four, pretty or number three, rather, pretty cash. Very, very dangerous horses. So my top seed selections is where it lies. Number 11, Jade the Striker, I'm expecting this one to run a very good race. So to number one, King's Magician. Well, remember, if you haven't, experience the taste of Jamaica's pure pride bottled water, pure water. Surely you have time. I can tell you, you're going to love it. Wear a mask, sanitize your hands, practice social distancing, and listen to the Open Gate Show. Subscribe and you will be rewarded. There are lots of interviews and previews and there are interviews and previews coming on along very soon and uh, tell others about it. Subscribe, it's free. 
Take care and all the best. And bye.